Hi and welcome, my name is Helmut Wormann Whitaker with Katase and today we are sharing a video with you from a webcast during which Kay answers the question, what skills do you expect your students to acquire? The question is specifically asked in connection with Kay's course series Setting the World in Balance. But as she answers the question, she describes so many of the amazing things Katase offers. So whether or not you are interested in taking the course, listening to Kay's answer is a wonderful adventure in exploring and learning about the magic and gifts of this ancient tradition. Have fun, enjoy, and thanks for watching. So that brings us to what skills do you expect your students to acquire within the four-year course? Okay. Um, I personally do not expect anybody to acquire anything and that's a word thing here we're getting back to the word stuff and expecting expectations that's part of what we're called we call the no-nos you don't you just don't want to go there you, there's no need i don't expect and i don't demand but what i offer and what i can lead you to in the class Many absolutely extraordinary things. Your song. That's the biggest and the best gift of all. And it's the one that will serve you no matter what direction you go, how far you take it, what you want to learn, whether you know how deep you want to go with spirit, friendships. There's so many different things within the tradition that you can focus on and really get deep into. And they all require your song. That's where it all starts, is knowing your song, learning how to live it and be it every day, own, own, own it, and identify with it. Don't identify with your masks. Identify with your song. So that is something through all of the four years of this class, major, major piece. It's the foundation. All the advanced classes that I teach, it is a major piece. It's learning about song, learning more about song, learning more about experiencing and owning your song and being in it all the time and unplugging the masks. That's, that's the baseline. Song and masks. Signatures. We've talked about signatures before. Every, everything has a song. Everything is an individual, and it's radiating out uh, with its own uniqueness. And that is what we call a signature, this feeling quality that is different in every individual. It's different in every spirit. It's different in every human. It's different from one animal to the next, from one species to the next, different planet to a sun to everything. The signatures are different. Different foods have different signatures. When you get into healing, the body parts have different signatures. Diseases have different signatures. And you can learn that. So that is a, a major piece of what it is we learn and focus on through all the years of study. Learning about journeying. And I'm not talking about what some people call journeying is, is really a guided meditation where you make your own thought form of a world and you jump into it and you just experience the thought form world that you just made. This is not what we do. There is a special exercise where we do that and we know we're doing it and we do that on purpose. But I'm talking about real journeying outside of your body into 3D time space somewhere out there or into the nonlinear, into other worlds, engaging all kinds of other places and entities and knowledge, history, future, anything. All the things that are part of accessing the nonlinear. That's where knowing song is so important because if you don't, chances that your masks guide all your experiences or at least part of all your experiences, are pretty high. Um, not just pretty high, it's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know your song, 
and you don't know the signature of your song, and you can't tell the difference between your song and one of your masks or a thought form floating down the street, if you can't feel the difference between them, then when you try to go on a journey, your masks have a heyday. They jump in and they make a world that you're expecting to see made out of all your blind beliefs and with details that they want you to see because it fits their agenda. But you don't engage the real thing. You're not really journeying. You're not really engaging something outside of yourself and your masks. You have to learn your signatures in order to ensure that when you are engaging the nonlinear, you're trying to interact with spirits, you're trying to do a journey, that you are interacting with a real other being and you're in a real other place. Not a thought form of your own creation with your own signature stamped all over it and your mask signatures stamped all over it in neon colors. There's another question here, which, I mean, we should continue on, on the elements that, that you teach in the course, but there's a question that really ties into that, and it's how do you tell the difference between the masks and true spiritual experiences in the beginning? That's in the very beginning. We start with our song. You learn your song. You feel your song. You learn the signature. You start looking at your masks and feeling the difference between your song and your masks. You learn the signature feeling difference. We do these different exercises, these different steps that help teach this, so that when you step out and you do your journey, you have a much better chance of distinguishing. Are you in a pretend world, or are you in a real world? Are you interacting with a pretend spirit, or are you interacting with a real spirit? other entity. And the feeling difference is extraordinary. It's quite dramatic. But you have to get out of your own masks long enough. You have to scoop the junk aside, scoop those expectations aside, and feel your song. Start from your song. We we start every one of these practices with getting in our song, feeling our song very strongly. And then we step into the practice. It's a perfect question to the reason why song is so important, especially in the first three level classes, but throughout the course. But it's a perfect yeah. point. It's the only way you're going to ever really know the difference. If you do not know your song and the signature of your song and how it feels different than the signature of your masks and masky things, you will never know whether. You're in a pretend thing, a pretend journey, or you're doing the real thing. Okay. What else do you have left on your list there? Ooh, we got a whole pile of things here, and this is just this is just the frosting on the cake. This isn't doesn't even get to the rest of the stuff. Okay. I, I remember <laughs> I remember I got an email from um, somebody who signed up for the course and asking what you really teach mm-hmm. in the course and I essentially told that to really describe all the details is just impossible. It is. It's impossible. But There's so much that you learn just from one exercise or one ceremony, one initiation. There's so many, many different things that are taught and given. Uh, it's, there's just no way to describe it all, list it all. But I will, I will list out, we, we made a little list here of a few things that are kind of obvious and... Good frosting. Okay. Controlling your focus and your attention. If you're asleep and your masks are in the driver's seat, they are controlling your attention and your focus. They decide what you're going to be thinking, where your mind is aimed, and what you're going to feel and what you're going to believe. They describe everything. So we learn how to get in our own driver's seat. That's when you get in your song. You get back in your own driver's seat and you learn how to take control of your focus and your attention again. This is an extremely important step. It's not just how to get into your own, back into your own privacy, but how to stay how there. How to stay there. <laughs> a lot of people can get there for like a minute, and then, whoo, there they go. 
ooh, massive condom, and they're on the ride again, and they're not in their driver's seat. Relationships, and that includes everything 3D, everything nonlinear, mask-to-mask relationships, understanding what that is and what the signatures are, what it feels like, song-to-song relationships. And what the difference is. The difference between those two, big, big, big time. Relationships with spirits, relationships with humans, and anything and everything else that we share our world with. And into the non-linear, relationships are extremely important as entities and as humans. Because we are in relationship with so many things and beings all the time. We just aren't paying any attention. We don't really realize it. And all those relationships are in a fog. They're mask to mask. We're asleep. We're in a fog. We don't even realize that there's a relationship going on and we don't care. And we're just the walking dead. But here we start learning about all of our relationships and how to have better relationships. Yeah, you shared a piece on the blog that was titled Life is Relationships. Yeah. And that pretty much describes it. Life energy. This is the gift of the North. This is a very big piece of how we manage to make all these things happen how we can do it for ourselves, how we have consistent energy to be able to do these things. And this is a, an initiatory access to life energy. Healing of ourself. Many ways, many levels through all the, the years that you study. The healing of others on all kinds of levels, all kinds of ways that uh, we accomplish that. And... Of course, with the healing arts, very much on purpose, working to heal others. All of those healing technologies. And there's the healing of the world. Waking up, that's that's our big goal, it's the bottom line. It's when you are in your song, and you don't have the babble, you don't have the masks, they're not plugged in, then you are awake and clear. You observe things for what they really and truly are, and you're not being conned by all of social dictates or masks or blind beliefs or any of the rest of it. You really have that kind of clarity. The effects that we have on other, the effect we have on ourselves and the effects that we have on other. When I say other, I mean Everybody, everything out there. We are affecting everything. Whether you're in your mask and asleep or you're awake, we are affecting everything. And if you're going to be awake, you need to start noticing how you are affecting. What are these things? What's the effect that's going on with others around you because of something that you said or something you're thinking and feeling or some action that you took. It's not just noticing, it's getting to a place of uh, being purposeful about how you affect the world around you and the people around you from a song-centered place. Katasi is all about being purposeful with everything, learning how to be very carefully purposeful sacred space, creating sacred space. What is that? Everybody thinks they have an idea what it is, but you learn what it really is and how to create it. And safe space, space that is safe with you and your fellow students and your teacher and the spirits that are there to help. And being able to create those things in in your life as well. Not just the class, but anywhere. Yeah. Sacred space, safe space, safe space interaction with others. Spirit senses. 
we have physical senses and we have spirit senses. And that could be talked about for a week and not have finished covering it. <laughs> perceiving the songs of others. First you learn to perceive your own song. And then if you're successful at that, and you know that difference between your song and masks, then you can perceive the true song of others. People, animal, plants, rocks, the land, the waters, the air, anything, anything, anything. That's ecstatic. Exciting. Yeah. So this is, could you call this a brief overview? I mean, just, yeah, there's still more. Just there's going into the, I'm, I'm sorry, do you still have more on your list? Please, yeah, just, yeah. go ahead. Um, the ability to live in song and never compromise, as we have, we've been talking about today. Never compromise for anything, for anybody. Learning to hold on to your song, hold on to your truth, the knowing of who and what you are, your own identity, and not giving it away. As a kid, when we go to sleep, we give away our song. We give away our power. We give away our purpose. We give away the truth of who and what we are. In Katasi, we learn how to take it all back and own it, no matter what. We learn about what the purpose in our life is for this lifetime. And if it has any correlation to purposes in other lifetimes. And we learn about other lifetimes. We, we learn about our ancient, ancient history for eons. As entities, we're extraordinarily ancient and vast. And we've done a whole lot of things through all that time. We've been a lot of places. <laughs> And that's part of us. It's part of our song. It's part of our knowingness. It's part of who and what we are. The more we know about our song, the more we know and remember about all of that. And I can guarantee you, it's going to blow your socks off. Other traditions talk about, oh, yes, well, I think maybe you had a, another human lifetime before. Yep, you, you, were, you were in the Civil War. I can see it. Or you were in China, and you didn't like it. And look at what it's doing to you today. That's a very limited and small and narrow concept of who and what we are and who and what we have been through time. The more you know about your song, the more you will know and remember about who and what you actually are. And the more you'll understand your purpose of being here today. Exactly. And nothing gets in your way. You won't, when you know that and you feel it, you accept it, you identify with that, nothing gets in your way. You don't compromise it for anything. Reminds me again of the expression that you really don't find time anymore for things that do not relate to your purpose. <laughs> yeah, I haven't found time for a really long time now. If it doesn't relate to my purpose, um, I don't have time for it. One of my students was, was uh, discovering that fairly recently, and um, that's all she could say over and over again. <laughs> just, I don't have time for that. I just don't have time for that. I can't do that. I... I can't do that. I could go be doing this spiritual thing. I could be doing things with my my studies and my practices and the song. And I don't have time for that. Okay. If that's what it is. I mean, we really could go on just in the healing arts classes and all the gifts from the ancient healing tradition of the Hedekas. You could talk for hours on end. But I think this gives a very nice overview. This is pretty good. Yeah. It's hard to describe the healing arts. And yeah. I focus mostly on the Hedekas way of dealing with it and talking about it and teaching it. 
And there's a little bit in there that is very specifically Egyptian. But when you boil, you take the surface off of, of language or metaphors that the two different cultures, the ancient Egyptian and the Hedekas, uh, would use, the steps of doing the healings and doing the psychic surgery are essentially identical from the two different cultures across the planet from each other. <laughs> 